Hello, I'm Ambar. And I'm Neha. We are parents of a gifted child who is on autism spectrum. Through our YouTube channel, we want to help parents with children on the spectrum learn more about it, avoid a lot of myths that are there related to autism, as well as provide strategies and tips that can ease the parenting journey. All our content is well researched, but remember every child is unique and there is no way that this video replaces any professional medical advice or intervention. If you find our video helpful, please like it, subscribe to our channel and further share it with parents of children on the spectrum that you may know about. We post new content every Sunday at 8 pm Indian Standard Time. Now COVID cases are rising again, at least in this part of the world where we stay. Uh, and uh, a lot of families are getting affected. Uh, while a lot of people are not getting themselves tested, but actually the cases are high and a lot of are getting affected by viral fever or other symptoms and uh, so in this video we'll try to cover what to do if your child on the spectrum or you as a parent contract COVID how you should handle the situation at home now points are based on the assumption that the world has accepted to live with COVID governments across the world are not going to announce any major lockdown or travel restrictions for kids the schools are not going to shut their therapy centers are going to remain open and everything outside will stay open and normal as they have been in the last six months. What we want to cover here is that if you, your child or you get impacted by COVID, then your life gets disrupted only for 7 to 15 days till you safely recover back and safely recover and get back to your routine. And then things are the way they have been. So let's take for example, like the child is positive and at least one member of the family is okay. Now COVID testing is a major problem with the children. It is very difficult for, uh, to them, for them to express that they are not um, you know, comfortable with it. Anybody, even us, we are not very comfortable with having a, you know, a, a, a cotton swab being put into your nostrils and in your mouth. Nobody's comfortable with it. But the children, it is more difficult for them. So uh, in the previous years, in the last three years, I think we've had quite a few tests. We've got it done on the basis of obviously not being well. And most many of them have been due to travel requirement where it is mandatory to get the tests up. Now, a different ways we've tried with our own son, uh, holding him tightly and, you know, getting it done because he would not sit still. Not the ideal way to get it done, but then we had to do it a couple of times. Uh, what you can try is actually try talking to your child and let others do these things beforehand and he sees it and then maybe it is not so forceful. The other is sleeping. If the child is sleeping, you should wake him up, uh, especially for the self-test kits. You have to make the child sit up and do the self-test kit. Uh, RT-PCR, again, not recommended getting it, you know, lying down and getting it done. So you should make the child sit up. Uh, the child has seen... Uh, everybody getting the tests done, you know, uh, the nozzle of uh, the uh, the stick being shoved up, and uh, he has seen it. He has uh, not liked it, obviously, but he has been able to observe it. You can also try um, getting things he really likes and reward him after sitting quietly, not just quietly, but getting it done properly. Uh, we've tried counting strategies as well because he knows counting and he enjoys it. You can sort of uh, let it, uh, let him do it because once he knows that if you count from 1 to 10, he won't have that anxiety in his mind, when will this get over? He will be able to do it and he'll sit through it. But most of it, you should try keeping something which he really likes. So like our son, he really loves juices or he loves chocolate. So I bribed him the latest that um, I'll give you a chocolate once you're done with it. So he sat on his own and he let me actually put that thing in his nose. The other is you should monitor symptoms. Symptoms because uh, children can express only with uh, to a certain extent. They have their limitations. The verbal children, they, they have their limitations. They are able to tell you in a few words, but that's not enough. Um, children who are not verbal at all, how are they going to tell you? How are you going to figure out what your child is going through? You have to look for signs. Signs like difficulty in breathing, Throat pain, if throat pain, throat is aching, how do you figure that out? Um, you know, um, there are times when you can just uh, sort of uh, ask them 
is it hurting here? Is it hurting here? Anyway, if you do that, it, it becomes easier for the child to uh, express because they understand here, there, and they're able to touch their hand. You can say, take mama's hand and tell me. Then there is also check their temperature, body temperature. You don't have to do it in the mouth. Body temperature, it's important that you do that. Oximeter, always keep a oximeter handy so that you can check the oxygen levels. That is very, very important. And it's easier to do it when they're sleeping and it, they have to be calm. So easier when they're sleeping or oh, oximeter has those numbers coming and I think the children are getting fascinated with the lights and they do get fascinated with the lights and the numbers there. You can go ahead with it. Then it is the energy level. If they are, you know, generally any child who is uh, not just children, even adults, when they're not well, they do not feel like doing anything. So even if your routine is disrupted for those few days, please handle it with care because the child already is stressed he doesn't know what is happening to his body. It is important you just let him be. Do not make him exercise and do not go completely uh, bonkers over doing things like, um, uh, you know, the, I have to make him do these things because it is the routine that we follow. Do not be so, um, let's say, um, frigid. On the frigid. Road. Thank you. Do not be so frigid. You have to be flexible. Um, because they can't go out and play physically, you can do things at home. There's so many things you can do. You can read books with them, you can play uh, softball with them, you can play catch, you can play puzzles, you can do craft work. Our son really likes tearing and pasting, so you give him dots to tear and you can give him fevicol and he'll be like holding, he'll be squeezing it out. So you can do that. But uh, what you should keep in mind is the sensory needs are very, very important. So since our son, he goes downstairs to uh, play in the park, he walks on the grass, he walks on mud, he walks in the sand pits. So um, those needs have to be uh, addressed. So what you can do is you can have, you can play with water at home, little water. You can always take clay. You can always take uh, kinetic, sand, kinetic, sand, kinetic yeah. sand, which is available, easily available. Slime, all these things can be really helpful in, um, you know, in satisfying their sensory issues. Uh, plus, you can also try using kidney beans and pulses and lentils, all these kind of things to sort of give him that uh, texture effect. Plus, the diet. One must understand too many sugary things or salts or fats do not help. And uh, it, it does hurt the throat when you give such kind of food. So you should have a balanced diet. You can try giving them uh, soft foods. You can try giving them bread. You can try giving your child... Uh, uh, let's say rice and uh, with a bit of uh, lentils you know cooked all these things soft cooked things it's easier for the child to digest and at the same time get the nutrition which is important um, medicines try taking syrups because actually it's very difficult to uh, at least for me it's been very it's very difficult to get a, a, a tablet down his throat so I prefer taking uh, syrups for him from the doctors if you do not have syrups the other thing is you can actually crush the um, uh, the medicine and put it in the favorite food or maybe with applesauce or yogurt or maybe even honey for that matter but you need to check certain things with your doctor if it can be given with those substances I mean with those things because just in case there's a reaction we do not know how the how the medicines work with these kind of things so make sure that you ask your doctor before doing anything like that uh, another important thing is to uh, make them do hand wash. We all know how Im the importance of hand wash uh, while uh, uh, as a hygiene protocol. Uh, during COVID, we were able to, you know, around two years back, we were able to teach us some hand wash. So that is something uh, he does very regularly. Uh, but uh, in case you haven't taught this to your child, I think it's time that you start teaching him the habit of washing hands. Now a child goes and does it on its own. Uh, so that is another good hygiene practice to teach him. Uh, again, it's very important that, you know, we try to teach our children so many different words which we think are important, but some, a lot of us sometimes forget to, you know, teach them how to explain their discomfort, right? So if we haven't done this till now, uh, start, you know, teaching him, you know, stuff like, you know, if he's not feeling well, the forehead is hot, can touch his forehead. My child can say, you know, with, with his forehead or, or, yeah, he can or say even, yeah, he can, he can say, say hurt. hurt. 
so he is able to express that. I can say that. words like hot. So try combining whatever words he can say or actions he can do. That okay, hot, okay. fever, and hurt. hurt. Yeah, his throat is hurting. Hurt. So try to you know uh, whatever his or her vocabulary of words that the child has, try using them uh, and try and teaching him to explain discomfort. Uh, even if you know child is well as of now, because uh, when such a situation comes, then this would really help. Mm, it's important to provide comfort and extra support to the child when he is not well, uh, uh, especially with the room temperature, uh, because that is uh, when you have COVID and depending on the temperature outside, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, you might be feeling warm, but as soon as you try to switch on the AC or a fan for some time, you start feeling cold. So to maintain that ideal temperature actually becomes very tough. So you have to take care that you have to take actually really take care to maintain that comfortable room temperature. Use a light blanket or thick one, depending on which part of the world you are staying. What is the weather outside when your child has contracted COVID? So do that. Uh, offer your child lot of comfort and hugs. Now, if not, if your child is down with COVID, then and you are not, then. It's of course recommended that you wear a mask and go to the child and offer him hugs. But he needs that reassurance. Uh, offer him his favorite toys. Uh, that is very important. A lot of children uh, like to sleep with their toys. Uh, at least toddlers. Our son likes to sleep with his car. So offer those cars to him. Uh, or whatever toys he generally plays him. Offer him that extra bit. You know, every day of course we are offering him things that he loves and all that. But try to offer him that extra. Now therapies and schools, as we as a team, the it's the the, the you know, regular world is functioning outside. So some of them might still be having you know online classes, the therapy sessions or schools. Now if it, that's the scenario, then you can actually ask uh, your child to join those classes online. But remember, since uh, he would have or he or she would have gone used to a physical setting in the last six months since everything is open outside uh, this won't work so if you are trying to put him into that class from a learning perspective suddenly he can't you know switch from a physical scenario to an online scenario the idea of putting him into that online classes to show that his favorite teacher or his favorite therapist still exists you know and is respect of the fact that he is stuck at home and not outside but those people are still a very much part of his world so he could you know join a class for a short time or at least you know just just work, see the faces just do, faces. A, just do an online call and say hi and you know see the familiar faces so and let's consider the, another scenario when the primary caregiver the parent with whom the child is more attached in our case the mother and if she is not well then what do you do uh, then the child would have to stay with the father or the other whoever the other caregiver is there in the house if at all there is one and uh, so that uh, and that's a good you know opportunity for the child to bond with the the secondary caregiver or the father or the other parent the child is less attached to or maybe the grandparents and uh, so in case, so you have, to, you have no option. You can't send the child to the primary caregiver. She is not well. Uh, but you can do a video call with her and show her. In case the child becomes out of control, still wants to go and meet the mother, then there is no option. But you have to then, you know, make the child wear a mask. Our child has learned how to wear a mask. And you can take him or her to the mother and make sure the mother is wearing a mask. We often run a air purifier in the in the room or keep the windows of the room open before that so that you know the air is in the room is a bit less stale so that those are a few things that you can do bef before taking the child to the primary caregiver and the primary caregiver can give a hug of course by wearing a mask and then you have to then take the child back and make sure that the child is again you know washes his hands and sanitize and his clothes are changed uh, in fact I think uh, this is a good time for the secondary uh, caregiver to uh, observe the child, see what his abilities are, what is what he can do, give him stuff to explore more, learn things. 
uh, what happened in our case uh, when we were down with COVID, in fact, we were all were down with COVID last uh, year, in fact, including our child, but we were like me and Neha were totally you know, lying down, but that child was still had his energy and he learned to do scooter. You know, we had the scooter with him, we used to take him to park, but he was not doing it. But in those three days when we were not too well, that he learned the scooter on his own. So, yeah, you never know. Uh, you what might, your child might surprise you with. What your child might surprise you with, even when he's down with COVID or you are down with COVID. We hope you liked the video and would uh, learn something out of it. So, thank you so much. Please do share your comments with us. Thank you. Thank you.